today on Divorce Court. I'm on Divorce Court today because my girlfriend just keeps lying and cheating on me. And because of her commitment issues, we had to call off our engagement. Autumn's changed since I met her. She has trust issues, and she can't seem to stop going through my phone. Communication between me and Maya, it really sucks. Every time we get into an argument, she walks away and never comes back. She's always constantly accusing me, and I can't seem to get time to myself to think. All I want is the judge to just make her admit to her wrongdoing and apologize for all the pain and the hurt that she's caused me. I'm prepared to take the advice that Judge Lynn Toller gives me today in order to become a better person for my girlfriend. Before we get married, Maya has to seriously change her cheating ways. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Autumn Livingston and Maya Anderson. The two of you have been together for four years, engaged for two years. You can't, however, seem to get to the altar. You've given me your marriage license with permission to tear it up, should I find this union ill-advised. You've also filled out my compatibility test. I'm going to tell you whether or not I believe your union is a good idea. I will start with you, Ms. Livingston. Why don't you tell me what's going on, why you love each other, but you can't quite seem to get it together. Well, Maya's lying and cheating has really taken a toll on our relationship. We've been together for four years. Right. She proposed to me two years ago. And when she proposed, it was so romantic. Mm -hmm. Rose petals, candles. The bathtub was drawn for me, and when I turned around, she was down on one knee and asked me to marry her. Of course, I would say yes. I mean, who wouldn't say yes to a romantic time like that? But then I found out two months later that she was cheating on me with a neighbor. One day, we had got into an argument, and all of a sudden, she decided to up and leave at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I asked her, where was she going? And she told me a relative was coming to pick her up. I didn't believe her, so I let her leave, and I trusted my gut, and I followed her outside. And when I followed her outside, I saw her get into a car that did not belong to a relative. So when I checked my Uber account, it told me that she took an Uber to a house that was down the street from me. And that's when I called her. I called her about 20 times, and she just 20. did not... Yes, and she did not answer the phone. So when she finally answered the phone, I heard a woman in the background, like, whispering, and then I heard Maya say, shush, and then she hung up the phone. Oh, and not... when I called Sorry. back, and when I called back, I was blocked. Ms. Anderson, what is your version of that event? Well, we had gotten to an argument. She never decides to give me the option to step out and not argue. I'm the type of person where I can't be in the same room with you if we're not cool. Well, argument wasn't even stop, that serious. Stop, Ms. Anderson. If we're not seeing eye to eye, I'm not going to want to be in the same room with you. So you're not going to tell me that I can't step outside and have my privacy and my air. You know what I'm saying? Right. So are you one of those that... No, we gonna talk about it now? We gonna talk about it now? We yeah, gonna talk about it now? Yeah, I am. Because it's all about communication. I can't do that. Okay, can't do that's that. not communication, that's frustration. When you chase somebody out of the house who's too angry to speak, you're not going to exchange any information. You're going to exchange insults mm -hmm. and upsets. If a person steps away because they're too angry to talk, you let them. Okay, but it, it just doesn't stop there. Okay. A friend of mine told me that she saw Maya on a dating site. I did not believe her, so she sent me a screenshot, and I took it upon myself to make the same social media account as her. Right. And I did see her up there. This is the same stop. And I, and I also have evidence of that right Nick, here. Nick, could I see that, please? Now, what are, you, what are you about to show me here? I'm about to show you her fake social media profile. But not only that, when I made the fake social media profile as it's well... It's a great name. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> the I woman try. that she cheated on me with reached out to me and told me that her and Maya had did something sexual. And when I confronted Maya about it, once again, she denied it and ran from it like she always done. But I was fed up and I was tired, so I shoved the Bible in her face. And I felt like that was the only way for her to tell me the truth, which she did. You, you mean mugged her with the word? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, Ms. I, Anderson, I... what is your take on that event? Okay, I'm gonna start from the Bible shoving in my face. Who does that? You know what I mean? No, I, I do. mean, that, like, I that's do. off. Come on, now. Yeah, like, that's off. At the end of the day, come to me as a woman. Mm -hmm. Come to me as a woman but and I ask did. me. Stop. Now, she's the type of person where she'll ask a question. I don't want to hear about what type of okay. person she is. I want to hear about this event. Is that your Facebook page? That's my page. And wasn't that a fake page that you were keeping from her? 
I wouldn't call it a fake page. Well, that I mean, wasn't your name on the page, was it? It's not my... That's not my name. No, that's but that's name. your picture. And yeah, those are your I mean. words. So you were doing that. You were conducting activity on social media you didn't want her to know about flirting and carrying on. Is that or is that not the case? You right, Judge. There Judgment. you go. But yeah, well, Maya yeah. also has... Why? I have issues with talking to her. I can't have a conversation with her. For example, she uses the social media account. Mm-hmm. You ask me, basically, am I talking to the girl, but then you answer my question after I answer it in your own words. That's not asking me a question. You're already determining what the answer is before you even ask me. Right. But it's not even her communication skill. She also has a serious anger problem. She's very impulsive. I wonder why, though. Because... I wonder why. Stop. No. One day, we were at her house, and I was texting a long-term friend. She got upset, so she tried to accuse me of cheating. But I feel like she accused me of cheating because it was definitely a guilty conscience. It's not accusing. So... Stop. After that, she started throwing my things outside of the door. And as she's throwing my stuff outside of the door, I lean out to grab my belongings and she pushes me outside. But when she pushes me outside, all I had on was a, a nude thong. So you can basically say that I was 100% naked. It was hot Did that outside. Did Ms. Anderson? Not the way she's saying it, no, ma'am. Did you put her out? Yeah, I put her out. You put her out with no clothes on. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. We're gonna talk about that. And what we're gonna talk about, Miss Anderson, is where your anger problem comes from. Because you say you had a difficult upbringing and you believe that that, in part, defines what you do now. She spilled candle wax on my mom's couch. Candle wax is not easy to get out. Did you spill candle wax on her mama's couch? Yes, I did. But I mean, it's she has a washer and a dryer. She can clean it. How am I supposed to wash a, a couch? So, Ms. Anderson, now that we're clear on the fact that you did put her out unclothed, you can tell me what led up to that act. Um. She spilled candle wax. Now, mind you, it was at my mom's house. Okay. She spilled candle wax on my mom's couch. Candle wax is not easy to get out mm -hmm. of a fabric. How am I supposed to explain that to my mother that she spilled candle wax on her couch? Do you think she did it on purpose? Yes. Okay. And then your response was? Well, I put her out after that, you know? Uh -huh. I mean... What were y'all arguing about? Trust. You know, basically... She accused me Did of you cheating. spill candle wax on her mama's couch? Yes, I did. Because she started throwing my things out the door. So, yes, I did. But, I mean, she has soap, she has water, she has a sponge. <laughs> she can clean it. You can't get candle wax out like that, man. Everybody know when it dry up, it's She hard has a washer and a dryer. She can clean it. And it got How am I supposed clean. to wash a couch? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> you think that she's afraid of making a commitment, but even though she proposed to you, why do you believe that? She admitted to me that she cannot commit to one person. This well, came out of her it. mouth. And I was really sad, and I was really devastated about that. But it also brought me back to why I feel like she has that commitment problem. She was homeless, and when she was homeless, she had to use her manipulation towards mm. other women to get what she needed okay. in order to stay afloat. Did you tell Ms. Livingston that you did have trouble committing? I told her I had commitment issues, but mm -hmm. I didn't tell her that I couldn't commit. Right. Is it a function of your upbringing? Tell me what went on that may um, have caused these issues. Well, I had a family member, basically. You know, he told me, I can't really raise a girl. So I kind of was raised like a boy. Mm -hmm. You know, where I really cut and show emotions. Right. So when I got into a relationship, now mind you, I really wasn't dealing with nobody on no serious stuff mm -hmm. before I met her. So that's how am I supposed to jump out of that? Right. It's right. not going well, it to later though. You're still doing the same stuff that you were doing then. How can you say that though? When you said that I... commitment thing, that was we were fresh, but four years no, later, you're, fresh, you're still not we committed so fresh, to me. Then... Well, 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 let me ask you this. Do you want to have a committed relationship with Ms. Livingston? Most is definitely. that really what you want to yes, do? What I need to do at this juncture is step back from all of the problems. I want to take a look at the compatibility test, and then I want you to tell me why. Because right now, all I hear is a hot mess. Tell me why you're still considering even 
the possibility of marriage given all of the difficulties that are going on. We were friends before we even got into a relationship. That's why I'm so hurt that she would even betray me like this. 10 seconds in, you went straight negative. Can someone who is not ready for a relationship ever truly commit to one? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Before we move on to the compatibility test, I want you to tell me about that Sunday you spent at her family member's house. The Sunday we spent at the family member's house, we were just there gathering and everything, and for some reason, the family member charged Maya to eat, charged her $20 just to eat a plate of food. What did you say to them? I mean, she charged me too. But I realized <laughs> that once Maya left and I got to eat for free, oh, they had an issue. Issue with her? Yes. Is it because they don't accept that you two are lesbians? No, it's not that. I really feel like... They any... just don't like her? Yeah. Ms. Anderson, what's your perspective on the way her family feels about you? Um, a family member of hers also had a friend that came over the house same time that I came over, and they basically welcomed him with open arms. And it's like, why I can't get that? Well, yeah. Why can't, why can't I just... Is it an ongoing thing, or that was that just one book? No, ongoing. No, it's ongoing. Event. It's, ongoing. Yeah. it's ongoing. Yes, ma'am. They treat you better when she's not with you. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. I looked at your compatibility test, and I saw exactly what I see here. You know, so far, I've heard stories of angst, anger, uh, distrust, mistrust, no trust. So I want you, Ms. Livingston, to give me a 30-second sales job on why Ms. Anderson is the person for you. I don't want to hear no negative, no nasty, no what if or whatever, just positive. Why would you would even consider marrying Ms. Anderson? Because this is my best friend. I mean, we were friends before we even got into a relationship. That's why I'm so hurt at the fact that she would even betray me like this. And... She's not judgmental. I can come to her for anything, and she would, wouldn't even look the other way. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm wrong, she's, she's there for me. Mm -hmm. It's my best friend. Mm -hmm. Now, I gotta say this to you. Yeah. Ten seconds in, you went straight negative. That's why I'm so hurt that she wouldn't even do this to me. <gasps> Ten sorry. seconds, and you didn't even notice. No, I okay? didn't. Okay? Which is another one of the problems that you have. I'm gonna give you a C minus. Because you went back to positive after that. <laughs> now. Mrs. Anderson. Yes, ma'am. Let's see if you can do any better. Well, Ms. Livingston is a woman for me because I love her. She's everything that you would ask in a fiance. She's everything that you wouldn't notice in a regular person. And I feel as though, you know, she's changed me for the better. And that's why today Judge Lynn told her, I want to do something. Yeah. What are you about to do? Come here. This just want to tell you that I love you, and you know that. I know. <laughs> you my JR, like I always tell you. And I, I ask that you can, you know, can hopefully marry me again. I know it's the second time, but I want to do right by you. I want to commit to you, and I want you to trust me. And if you can do that today, I want you to put the ring back on. Oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey. even propose right. I didn't Come say on, you man. could do that. I I didn't even say that you do that. Get up. <laughs> Get up. <laughs> stand over there. You stand over there. Because I got something to say to both of you that might want to change the trajectory of what you're doing right now. What would you do if you discovered your partner has a fake profile online? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. You two are spectacular ladies. I like you both. You are living a lightning and lull life. Everything is hot, everything is big, and everything's pow, or everything is flowers and candles and bathtubs. You cannot conduct a marriage in a lightning and lull manner. You have to be able to have a conversation about difficult things without exiting the premises. You have to be able to have a conversation about difficult things without raising your voice, causing chaos, and spilling candle wax on mommy's couch. <laughs> You two are both so afraid of being hurt that all you do is hurt one another. 
you spend all of your time securing your heart and your position, but you're not settled, centered, and mature enough to come to someone fully vulnerable and unafraid. And if you're not fully vulnerable and unafraid, you can't love fully. You're, you're searching for security, but you're so insecure, you can't lock that down. You want to be together because you want to cling to one another because you need one another to feel safe, but that's not where safety is. Safety is within yourself because if you're not safe within yourself, you'll never be able to be together and calm and collected. You have nuclear response to scuffle-worthy problems, and so do you. It's just like it's all boom, pow, like everything is life or death. And it just isn't. You two have to mature and calm down. What do you want to say? Like, I'm really at a breaking point. And my breaking point was when the woman that she cheated on me with, that she left my house at 2 a.m. for, we spoke on the phone. And she told me that they've had more than one encounter sexually. Once she got sexually. the number from my phone, without my permission. Well, that's so silly. You, you know, yeah, you shot somebody, and I found out about it because she snooped. You shot somebody. <laughs> you know, just because she found out because she snooped don't make, you know, the big wrong, and there's a little wrong. The big wrong was sleeping with somebody else. Listen, you're so eager to lock down something, you don't see that she has made many drop-kickable mistakes. First time a dude steps out on me, he steps out, and he keeps stepping because he can't come back. Now, if you want to forgive her over and over and over again because she's demonstrated that she's not mature enough and ready to settle down with you, I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Your, your relationship is all jacked up. Okay. You're not true to one another. And she's not ready to be committed to you. No. So you need to back up, back away, wait till everybody is in a place where they can come to each other without cheating and screaming and hollering and throwing everybody out, because all of that is a function of fear. Can I say something for a second? Go ahead! <laughs> but you let her talk, though. I just didn't. You I, interrupted why? me with the story about her. me. See what you... See, no. <laughs> now you just not right. Right. just she angry. Denied now I'm just work. angry. She you guys everything. spend too much time talking and not enough time listening. You have communication problems because neither one of you knows how to listen. Neither one. <laughs> I'm sitting up here, sitting on a 30-year marriage, telling you how to get from A to B, and you two want to tell me where I'm wrong. Y'all no, running no. around, cheating on each other, fighting, no, throwing I, each I other out. Cheat. But y'all, but y'all can't mean? hear what me. What you mean? You didn't cheat. I don't see cheat. that. I see don't. There? I don't. See that? I could have, but you I didn't. You two are not ready. You both need to go into individual counseling and deal with your own issues of insecurity and fear before you ever I'm not anywhere. I'm not insecure. I'm not insecure. You are insecure. If I were you, I'd listen to somebody. I'm going to send you to somebody to get you started on a journey that clearly you're not ready to take. You know what I mean? Because you can't see you're weak unless you're willing to look. And if you can't see you're weak, you're never going to get any better. Mm -hmm. And this ain't any good the way it stands now. This you, matter is adjourned. What does she have to do now to convince you to put that ring back on your finger? She has to show me that she's going to commit to me. I'm tired of hearing the talk. Show Let's talk me. more action. Yes. So with this type of fear of commitment, why do you think you're ready to propose? I know that I can, you know, stop the game, stop the lies, and just fully commit to it. Mm -hmm.